What do explosive lava, ancient seas, deep crust magma, and silica-rich fluids have in common? Each one built one of these five rocks. But which rock came from where? In this video, we're exploring how five very different rocks were created. So let's begin with the one that formed in an instant of volcanic violence. Apache tears form in explosive rhyolitic eruptions, blasts powerful enough to tear open calderas and domes. As gases escape from the silica-rich lava, the eruption tears it into molten droplets that are hurled into the air where they cool in flight in round into smooth spheres before they ever touch the ground. Once they fall, the Apache tears settle into thick layers of ash and pumice that harden into perlite, a soft hydrated volcanic rock where the nodules remain locked away for millions of years. Over time, wind, frost, and rain erode the fragile perlite releasing the glassy nodules and scattering them across the desert slopes like small black marbles. Most volcanic rocks contain abundant gas bubbles like vesicular basalt. Apache tears don't. They're almost entirely solid glass. That's why they're so dark, so glossy, and why they glow a soft amber when held to the light. Instant formation for molten lava is only one path. The next rock begins long after the lava cools and takes millions of years to form. Carnelian agate grows inside the hollow cavities left behind as basalt cools and gas bubbles escape. Later, silica-rich groundwater moves through the rock, depositing chalcedony inward from the walls in building bands layer by layer. Iron oxides tint the growing layers orange and red, giving carnelian agate its warm glow. Some cavities stay partly open and grow quartz crystals in the center, while others fill completely, forming solid agate nodules. Much later, weathering breaks down the softer basalt around them releasing carnelian agate into streams, riverbeds, and gravel bars. From shallow volcanic cavities, we now move deep underground. Sodalite forms miles below the surface, where hot alkaline magma cools slowly under intense pressure. But the chemistry has to be just right. The magma must be low in silica, enrich in sodium. If silica were higher, quartz and feldspar would dominate and sodalite would never form. As the magma cools, sodalite grows in veins and pockets within coarse-grained igneous rock. It rarely forms visible crystals. Instead, it appears as massive blue patches streaked with white or gray calcite and feldspar. Its vivid blue colors come from sulfur-bearing electron clusters trapped inside its cubic crystal structure, absorbing part of the light spectrum and reflecting back that deep saturated blue. And under ultraviolet light, sodalite reveals its hidden energy, glowing bright orange from within. Not all rocks form deep underground. Red jasper begins as silica-rich muds and sands stained by hematite. The same iron oxide that gives Mars its deep red color. These sediments settled in ancient shallow seas, coastal flats, floodplains, or volcanic ash beds, where they slowly compacted and hardened into solid rock. Later, when the crust was stressed or uplifted, the jasper fractured into sharp angular pieces called clasts. Groundwater carrying dissolved silica moved through every crack. As the fluid cooled, silica precipitated, coating each clasts 
and slowly cementing the fragments back together. Those bright veins, that silica healing the rock, one fracture at a time, a process geologists call brecciation. But one rock in this lineup undergoes a transformation unlike any other. Tiger's eye begins as blue crocidolite, a fibrous mineral found within seams of ancient banded iron formations. Rocks made of hematite and chert more than two billion years old. Later, hot hydrothermal fluids moved through the rock. These fluids dissolved the crocidolite and replaced each fiber with quartz, one crystal at a time. This transformation is called pseudomorphism. The texture stays, but the mineral changes. The first result is hoxi, a blue fibrous quartz with the original structure preserved. Over time, oxidation transformed the iron-rich fibers from blue to gold and brown. Lighter bands marked weaker oxidation, darker bands marked stronger. Because the fiber structure survived the entire transformation, the finished stone shows the moving band of light we call chatoyancy, the hallmark of Tiger's Eye. We followed five rocks from their origins to their final forms. If you want the deeper stories behind any of them, the full explainers are waiting below. <laughs>